Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. Sanjay Gupta is live at the epicenter of this outbreak in Mexico City this morning. The acting director says don't go there, but you're there, Sanjay. Uh, you also have some computer models uh, showing us exactly how this uh, flu is spread. Explain how that works. Yeah, this is pretty fascinating stuff. I mean, the, the best that you can really do sometimes is try and model what a pandemic might look like. And this is data the CDC uses as well as the World Health Organization. Some of this was developed back in 2006, sort of predicated on a virus that spreads easily. Uh, like the 1918 virus did, for example. So take a look at some of this modeling here. What they show in this first model is 10 isolated cases starting off in California. You see the white dots, and then it starts to spread uh, through time. This is a period of about 12 weeks, about three months. And you can see if this virus spreads easily, how much of an impact that can have. The green areas were healthy. Now they're sort of infiltrated by all these colors. That's the virus. Uh, about half the people either have the infection or they've died from the infection, Karen. All right, and again, just uh, if people are just joining us, these are theoretical models of what could happen. That's without doing anything. So what if they use something like Tamiflu uh, you know, or, or Relenza, which are these anti-flu medications, to try to stop the spread? Yeah, so Tamiflu was one of the things that was modeled as well. And it was interesting because, you know, you have to figure out how effective Tamiflu will be. But you can see in this model, it's very effective. Take a look there. I mean, if you give Tamiflu to people who have symptoms and to close contacts of those people as well, it makes a pretty big difference. And it buys you some time as well. Important time because you could possibly develop a vaccine. Now, if you look at the vaccine modeling as well, you see that, you know, giving a vaccine after it's developed also makes a difference, but about the same difference as Tamiflu. So at least in the initial periods, Tamiflu and vaccine, uh, you know, either or seem to make about the same difference. And uh, let's talk a little bit about trying to stop it, uh, shutting down the border, stopping travel. Again, there's been various recommendations. We had the uh, CDC director on today who said he, if he had a vacation plan to Mexico, he would cancel it. Yeah, you, you know, it's interesting, and the World Health Organization had a presser about this today saying they're not, uh, they're not shutting down borders, and part of the reason may be based on this next model here. Uh, shutting down borders really doesn't seem to help a lot as you watch the numbers. There. I can't see it with you here, Karen, but I know based on looking at these models, it doesn't make a big difference. Turns out once the infection sort of gets into a community or a particular town, keeping other infected people out really doesn't seem to make that big a difference. And that might be dictating some of their thinking and how they issue some of these travel advisories and how they decide whether or not they're going to shut down borders.